and to prevent another nuclear holocaust. Neutralizing the threat of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction must be the primary objective of all people. We must recognize and struggle for the right of all people of the world and future generations to live in peace. Security lies in peace, not weapons. Thank you. On behalf of Senator Inoue and Irene Hirano, I would like to present a letter of congratulations to my uncle, Dr. James Yamazaki. Thank you so much for your work, Dr. Yamazaki. You bring honor to your family, to the Japanese American community, and to the entire medical and health professions. Thank you. Please know that. <laughs> Please know that PSR is working to ensure that future generations of physicians aspire to the same level of commitment and accomplishment that your life work has shown. We have, by the way, some students and residents and postdoctoral fellows here tonight. I was wondering if y'all might stand so that we can recognize your early commitment. There's one other group that I'd like to recognize before we go on to our, our last award of the evening, PSRLA's new group, Therapists for Social Responsibility, which has organized and reached out to psychologists, to licensed clinical social workers, and marriage and family therapists. And I wondered if participants in the new group, Therapists for Social Responsibility, can stand also so we can acknowledge you. So where do we go from here? So today, the US is the only country, of course, to have used nuclear weapons in war. We all know well their ability to destroy life and the environment. And thanks to people like Dr. Yamazaki, we know the immense suffering and misery that they inflict upon survivors. And we know that we must not let this happen again. Last Wednesday, the LA Times ran an outstanding op-ed entitled A Critical Mass for Dis which outlines many current opportunities for a world free of nuclear weapons. The authority, clarity, and intelligence of its author were unmistakable, the voice of a reasoned and studied expert. No surprise, it was none other than the recipient of our last award of the evening, 2008 Founders Award, Mr. Joseph Cerenciani. Joe has written over 200 articles on defense issues, produced two DVDs on proliferation, appears frequently in the media, and has given over 100 lectures around the world in the past two years. He is currently the president of the Plowshares Fund, the largest philanthropic foundation focused exclusively on peace and security. Here to present Joe Cerencioni with PSRLA's 2008 Founder Award is the director of the Burkle Center for International Relations at UCLA. Please welcome Cal Rustiala. Cal. Thank you very much. I'm sure I speak for many of us when I say what an inspiring evening this has been. It's uh, a great honor to be here. <laughs> Several of the honorees tonight have been guests of the Berkeley Center over the last few years. Hans Blix, uh, Lawrence Bender, and Joe Serencione. And uh, it's really a great pleasure and a great honor to be here with them. So let me um, briefly introduce Joe. Uh, Erica said a few things about him. I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him and I think what makes him such a perfect recipient for this award. In the what's sometimes called the foreign policy establishment in Washington, there are many nuclear experts, many experts on weapons of mass destruction. Uh, but I think there are a few that are admired, as admired 
uh, well liked and respected as Joe Serencione. Joe, as Erica said, has worked on these issues for quite a long time. He worked uh, many years in Capitol Hill, uh, then at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, where he ran a series of very uh, impressive, remarkable conferences on nonproliferation uh, for, I think, something like eight years in a row. Uh, really an, an amazing achievement. He then went on to the Center for American Progress, where he was vice president for national security. Uh, and now, this spring, as Erica mentioned, he's assumed a new post as president of the Plowshares Fund. And I'm sure in this post, as in all of his past posts, Joe will show uh, an enormous level of dedication, uh, commitment, uh, and great knowledge. His knowledge of the area uh, is unparalleled. But I think perhaps his most formidable asset is his ability to speak, and it's a remarkable ability, uh, to speak with knowledge and passion together. We had a conference at UCLA uh, a little over a year ago uh, we had many, many wonderful presenters there, uh, former secretaries of defense, former Nobel Prize winners. Uh, but the person who made the greatest impression on me was Joe Serencione. His, uh, his comments on the, the legacy of the last few years, the missed opportunities, and the important opportunities for the future uh, was riveting, but also uh, on point, concise, cogent. He laid out a roadmap for what we need to do going forward, uh, and we have a wonderful opportunity ahead of us if we succeed uh, in electing uh, what I hope to be the next president, whom I hope to be the next president of the United States, and I know Joe's working with him. Uh, I think we have a great opportunity to rectify some of the errors of the past. So uh, I think we're all very fortunate to have Joe working uh, on these issues, and it's a great honor to welcome him to the stage. Please join me in welcoming Joe. Uh, I'm a little overclumped. <laughs> thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, thank you, Cal. Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Denise. I know the hour is late, and uh, uh, Denise told me I had about an hour for my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but I will shorten that because I know I'm the only thing standing between you and your TiVo Lakers game. So let, let me uh, just talk, start by, by talking just a little bit about one of my favorite Hollywood movies, The Matrix. And my favorite scene in The Matrix is where Morpheus, played by Lawrence Fishburne, is trying to convince Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, that he has lived his whole life in an artificial construct, a computer simulation. And within that simulation, the two are fighting. They're at a dojo and doing a martial arts combat. And Morpheus kicks Neo across the room. He crashes into the wall. He collapses on the ground. And Morpheus comes up to him. And he asks Neo, why did you lose? Do you think it had anything to do with your muscles here? Do you think that's air you're breathing? And Keanu Reeves gets that blank look on his face, really the only look he has. <laughs> and, and it starts to dawn on him what Morpheus has been telling him, that he's lived in an artificial construct with disastrous consequences. Now, I'm not saying that for the last seven years, we've had a White House where there have been evil machines <laughs> projecting an image of a president and a vice president. But I do believe that this administration has created an artificial reality that for most of these seven years, the American people have bought into with disastrous results. They us about the need to go to war. They have exaggerated the real threats we face. They have manipulated fear to make the American people support programs and wars that they never otherwise would have supported. Fortunately, I believe that the time is now coming where 